China's military making a major advancement, building its first ever overseas outpost. It's in the East African country of Djibouti, about eight miles away from the largest U.S. military base in Africa. Let's talk about it with James Carafano, senior fellow at the Heritage Foundation and a security and foreign policy analyst. Thank you for joining us. Good to be with you. Well, the U.S. has 42 bases in foreign countries. Uh, that's the most of any nation. Britain, France, and Russia each have about a dozen. And now China building its first in Djibouti on the east coast of Africa. What is the significance? Well, it's, it's political and, and also operational. So geopolitical is the, the Chinese have uh, interests in, uh, in Africa and increasingly in the Middle East. And having a uh, facility there allows them to have a sustained naval presence. People think, well, you sail a navy someplace. But even when that navy gets there, it needs gas, it needs food every day, it's got to fix stuff. And so having a permanent base allows you to keep a sustained naval presence there. And it can be for all kinds of things. So you might have to do NEO, uh, you know, non, uh, you know, evacuation of employees from an embassy if something happens, or evacuate somebody that's me that's uh, that gets sick or something, or or some other reasons. So there's lots of reasons why uh, you would want to do things in a region. And if you have a Navy there, it's to do that. And this allows you to do that. The other thing that's really, really big for the Chinese is they're gaining operational experience on how to operate navies at long distances. This started when they participated in the uh, anti-piracy operations uh, or off the, uh, the coast of uh, Africa. And it allows them, in a sense, to practice how to use their Navy in the Blue Ocean. That's, that's really valuable experience for them. Mm. Now, they're not calling it a base. Uh, they're calling it a support facility on the order in which you just described. Uh, but the deputy chief of China's joint staff wrote in a communist magazine that one of China's top priorities is, quote, steadily advancing overseas base construction. So is this a base and uh, are more coming? Yeah, I, I think so. It, and it's part of the, the China's ability to demonstrate it's a, a global geopolitical power. And if you want to do that with naval forces, you have to have bases uh, all around the world. But that's not, from a military perspective, and the thing the next president has to worry about, it's not this base in the Middle East. What you really, really have to worry about is what China is doing in its own backwaters in the South China Sea. If China owns the South China Sea, it's not just about owning a bunch of islands in the middle of the water. That the, the South China Sea then becomes a protected space for them, so it makes their, uh, their missile force, their run your sea missile force, almost invulnerable. It pushes back the distance where the U.S. Navy can safely uh, operate. So South China Sea, that, that military competition, that is huge because if the Chinese win that, they could push us out of Asia. Mm. The stuff in the Middle East, it's interesting, but it's not the, it's not the big fight. Huh. All right. Well, meanwhile, China is also reorganizing its military command structure. Uh, they say they're trying to rebalance their armed forces. Uh, how would this change the People's Liberation Army as we know it? Well, China has two concerns with their military. One is, essentially, China has a long-term strategy, a, a, a vision of an Asia without America in it, and eventually creating the military conditions where the United States doesn't have the ability to operate in Asia and isn't a significant force anymore. But they also have internal issues. They, they use the military as the foundation of domestic security, and they always want to make sure that it's appropriately structured and organized to do that. So they do have both of those missions. Hmm. All right, so the, G, uh, the Djibouti outpost is just eight miles, as we mentioned, from our U.S. base there. Um, what does this mean, that, that proximity uh, for the U.S., if anything? Well, not much. I mean, I, I imagine, you know, the Chinese maybe can do a little more spying on you because, again, if you've got a base there, you can keep their ships there and they, you can keep an eye on the U.S. Navy. And, and why would you want to do that? Well, maybe you don't even care about what the United States Navy is doing per se in the Middle East, but you like to watch U.S. naval operations, how the ship operates, what kind of tactics they use. That's all information you're compiling, which, you know, at some point would be very, very helpful if your goal is to actually push the U.S. Navy out of the Pacific. Mm. Uh, China has been participating in the United Nations anti-piracy missions. Uh, in fact, the U.S. has praised China for that. And uh, China says that this is one of the main reasons for this Djibouti outpost to repair and resupply the ships involved in uh, that effort. How important is uh, China's participation in this anti-piracy mission? Well, I don't think it's, I mean, I, I don't think it's usually important. I mean, these kinds of things wouldn't happen without the backbone of the U.S. Navy. I mean, the U.S. Navy is, is really the only naval force 
that can operate in a sustained manner around the world. And if anybody else does that, in a sense, you have to have the U.S. Navy to operate with. So the Chinese are there, like a lot of other countries, and that's right. helpful. But it also gives them a lot of, like I said, it gives them a lot of operational experience on, on how to operate a Navy, and that's, that's very important to them. All right, interesting. James Carafano, thank you as always. Thank you for having me.